my baby. They were very good to her. And I, I honestly, that was all she remembered. She couldn't remember anything, which is good. <laughs> but the next day, that was the one thing she said was, they were Thank so you. nice. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. This is the May 4th, 2017 meeting of the Scarborough Ordinance Committee. Uh, call the meeting to order. Uh, uh, attendance, we have uh, Councilor St. Clair and Councilor Rowan here with myself, uh, Councilor Donovan. Uh, approval of minutes. So moved. Motion. Second. Any uh, edits, changes? All I didn't favor? have any problems. Good. Uh, discussion on consumer fireworks and possible action. Okay. Uh, so what we have is in the agenda package the edited version of uh, Chapter 608A, uh, and those edits involve primarily changing the permit process to a notification process, uh, which uh, the chiefs have assisted us in doing. Uh, otherwise, uh, it is the same draft as we had previously. Can I ask you a question, Chair? Sure. So since I, I wasn't here, I apologize at the last meeting. Um, can I just get a brief explanation as to, so instead of a permit process, it's now going to be a notification. So they're going to still have to go to the police station mm -hmm. dispatch? Not necessarily. No. It's or they call? And I, th I think we'll, we'll work it out, but that we could do it online, and it could be uh, scanned and uh, emailed to oh, excellent. Uh, the fire department. Okay. Uh, I love uh, that. Yeah. I mean, it, it, what, what it's intended to do is you can't do it without having notified the fire department of, uh, of the fact that you're letting off fireworks. That way we have a public safety uh, coverage in the event there are circumstances that cause us to want to communicate with these people and tell them, slow down. And the notification came about because uh, it was deemed to be a, um, a lesser risk of liability Mm -hmm. uh, by having it be a notification mm -hmm. process than having it be a permit that. process. Right now, the, police, uh, the fire department issues permits under 608, mm -hmm. the display fireworks mm -hmm. for which are larger shows, and we'll talk about that more in a, in a minute, uh, uh, and, uh, and that's fairly, a fairly serious review mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that all of the conditions of a, of a professional fireworks show are, are, are met. Okay. So uh, Will and I, I think became convinced that uh, it was in our best interest to heed the advice of uh, Chief and the person you had with you who was very, did a very good job. I'm trying to think of what. Hmm. Great, thank you. Uh, did a very good job, I think, of uh, demonstrating that we were, we're better off having it be a notification process. The, the biggest issue for me all along has been that I wanted to make sure that dispatch had that copy. And so for me, as long as we can fulfill that need, I'm thrilled to do it any way that makes it easier on the police department, the fire department, and quite frankly, the consumer. Mm. Um, I just want to make sure dispatch has a list of who is supposed to be, who has the right to be doing this so that if there is a call that's made to them, they can be given the information. They, these people have registered. Yeah. They have to stop by 10 p.m. If they haven't, let us know. Good. Chief, Good. the chief wants. No, I was just going to say, what we talked about, uh, Kate, was having it, um, any of the fire stations or dispatch. Wonderful. Great. It would all end up coming to dispatch. Wonderful. So, so it would even be posted online. I'm sorry. Yeah. It would even be posted online who has those um, or just the not or just the notification process can be done online. Okay. So they could go on uh, the town's website, get a copy, uh, uh, download it, fill it out, scan it, email it to the fire department. That way you don't. That way that cuts down on a lot of your traffic. So that's great. Good. I'm thrilled by that. Right, you just hit right. submit. Right. Mm -hmm. 
goes into a database and then no matter who issues it, it's in the system. Wonderful. And, and I think probably uh, from a ordinance point of view, it's not necessary for us to work out those details. The, the ordinance establishes the policy hmm. and uh, the chiefs will be able to work out the details as to the most expeditious uh, and appropriate way to do it. Yeah, I'm totally comfortable with mm -hmm. that. Yeah, I'm thrilled by that. I, li I, I like the fact that I think anytime you can give dispatch more information so that they can answer calls with the most information that they can possibly have makes everybody so much happier. Absolutely. So I'm Good. great job. Right, exactly. Yeah. So that if this comes up again in two or three years, like we know it will, I know it will, um, we'll have, like you said, we'll have that data. So I think that's great. Good job, Good. guys. Uh, accept a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, discussion. I would just say great job to you guys for putting mm -hmm. this together and making mm -hmm. those changes last week. And I appreciate the fact that um, Will gave me my 10 p.m. Good. So we, we, <laughs> uh, we have uh, the motion in front of us, which is uh, the uh, copy of the amended uh, draft as it appears in the materials that were posted for this meeting. That's the motion we're voting in. All in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. <coughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're going to add. Uh, Will raised uh, the point that um, while at the not the housing alliance, it was at. Uh, the historic preservation. Historic preservation meeting. Several people spoke with him, uh, uh, making a very strong argument for us considering making an amendment to the senior property tax relief program uh, uh, based on the continuous increases in property taxes uh, and asked that we uh, consider it at today's meeting. So I'm going to without objection, add it as uh, item 8A uh, just before adjournment. Thank you. Didn't I see an email about that? Yeah? Okay. Yeah, also built on the email from originated by. And, and I think that I, we, d we did have an email on it, and I think the uh, um, Jessica Holbrook was one of the people at that meeting who made a vigorous argument for doing something so uh, when we get when we get to that uh, we'll let will uh, explain the whole background sure. and take it from there sound good yeah which she didn't see my email which tried to explain why not the, why not and the yeah. complexities of doing that yeah so of course no okay. sounds good uh, next item on the agenda um, discussion of fireworks display ordinance and possible action uh, to update everybody who may be watching this, uh, uh, a week or so ago, Chief Thurlow proposed some edits to our fireworks display ordinance. That's Chapter 608. Uh, uh, chapter 608 is distinct from our consumer <coughs> fireworks ordinance, which is Chapter 608A, uh, and it has been on the books for a longer period of time than the consumer fireworks, which is relatively new. Right. Uh, and it's a more uh, sophisticated uh, review and permit process. Uh, uh, it requires both state fire marshal and Scarborough Fire Department permits uh, in, some in some cases. It has to be done by a professional technician. Uh, so these would be the kinds of events you would see at uh, 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 Beechridge Speedway uh, and whatnot. Uh, it has uh, risen in a number of circumstances. Private events have requested uh, the opportunity to do this, like a wedding. Uh, so uh, uh, the chief answered all the questions that I had. I forwarded those on yep. to you so that you were aware of those. A yeah, half dozen instances a year, this uh, uh, looks like a contained 
relatively modest uh, uh, interpretation of what is permissible to be issued for a fireworks permit. Mm -hmm. Now, the chief's purpose, I think, is to update 608 so that it marries up appropriately with 608A, since uh, 608 uh, was enacted when consumer fireworks had not been um, uh, allowed uh, by the state and thus then adopted by the town of Scarborough once it was permitted to, to do so. Right. So uh, uh, I'm going to put it out there for uh, both of you to, since you're probably maybe not as up to speed on this as as the chief is a, and I am having discussed it. Um, and chief, do you want to add anything in the way of comments? Well, because for people that are watching on yeah. TV. No, I think that was a great overview, uh, Councillor Donovan. The, our goals were just to be in compliance with our own ordinance. And because mm -hmm. when the Consumer Fireworks Ordinance went into effect, there were a couple of changes that we didn't pick up in this one that we wanted to rectify. Um, it, in one of the changes, you can see it, it uh, specifically did not authorize consumer grade fireworks to be used for displays. And that is something that technicians often do as part of a bigger display, even the one at Beach Ridge on 4th of July. They use a combination of the full size aerial shells, but also some consumer type uh, products. So we didn't want to be in violation of our own ordinance. The other change that has happened more recently is the state fire marshal's office has changed their internal policies in terms of what they do and do not permit. At one point, they permitted all proximate shows in front of an audience, but now those that use consumer grade uh, product, they do not permit. Our current version of this display ordinance required a state permit that you could not get from the state. So mm -hmm. we wanted to change that language to make sure that we weren't creating a conflict there. And, and this really, I think as Councilor Donovan mentioned, we have a few requests each year for these types of events, much smaller than a Beach Ridge type 4th of July display, but for um, weddings and smaller type events where we were kind of strapped in that we could not authorize those by the 608A consumer ordinance because of the restrictions to the days that it's allowed. We've been permitting them through this more rigorous process, making folks hire a technician and then getting all the review that comes with that in terms of safe distances from neighbors and, and uh, proper notification and all the other things that go with that. So these language changes really just bring us into compliance, clarify a couple of things, and uh, I think get us where we need to be for past practice. I'm happy Good. to answer any questions. questions of the chief? So uh, just so I'm clear, so this isn't uh, necessarily making it um, any more permissive or uh, easier for someone to set off these shows. It's just bringing us in compliance to say, hey, you can use consumer grade fireworks and you don't have to get this permit, which you can't get anyway. Is that am I understanding? Correct. The, the, our ordinance said you had to get a permit that the state wouldn't issue didn't make any sense. But no, we have not made it any easier to get it. The restrictions are still the same. A small event still needs to hire a, a, a technician. So that is the yes, no decision for a lot of these because there is certainly an expense to doing that. Um, but it does provide an opportunity for folks to, to have these types of displays, even if they're using low power shells, uh, more than the five or now four days that are authorized under the other ordinance. Gotcha. And the inspections that we talked about last time are still required. Um, yes. Great. I get it. So I saying, any, any questions? No, I'm good with it. Uh, I mean, it sounds like uh, uh, it, one puts us in compliance. Uh, one gets the permit process now properly identified, uh, uh, allows consumer fireworks to be a recognized type of fireworks used in any of these events, uh, oddly at, at more expensive, larger, noisier ones, were the only thing allowed in the previous right. event. <laughs> and yet they were probably using them yes. uh, uh, because they couldn't see why it would possibly, you could allow one and not the other. So 
uh, you're right, I think it's good to have it uh, be in compliance. So I'd be okay with advancing this yeah. Oh, yeah. with the Consumer Fireworks Ordinance. Yeah, I'm good. fine with it. I'd make a motion to that effect. Good. Uh, second. Yep, sorry, second. Okay, uh, the motion uh, is to uh, uh, in, uh, move to the Town Council the amended version of uh, Chapter 608, the display fireworks, as it appears in the materials that were posted with the agenda. Correct. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah. All right. Uh, Sign regulations. Um, let me see. <coughs> see if I can find. Oof, oof, oof. I guess that was summarized. Uh, you need an introduction? April 19, 4 19. Let me just find that sure. and I'll, I'll summarize it. Okay, um, next item on the agenda is uh, our sign regulations. Uh, this is an ordinance that uh, Larissa has worked long and hard on, and I've had the opportunity to uh, edit it. So, uh, uh, and a complicated ordinance. Uh, for those uh, watching us today, uh, one reason why the sign ordinance has gone undergone a significant review vis-a-vis -vis temporary signs, we really didn't touch the others, uh, is because the U.S. Supreme Court issued a case in 2015 that um, required all signs to be treated equally. They had to be content neutral in terms of the restrictions that a municipality imposed uh, upon uh, the signs themselves. And so you could not have uh, two square feet for a church supper and six square feet for a political sign. Uh, and these were uh, largely in the right of way. Uh, so uh, the right of way r uh, um, provisions have been largely amended to one, have them comply with the law. And uh, the other thing that the ordinance tries to do is to um, preserve uh, some of the uh, natural areas of the town, uh, like the Scarborough Marsh uh, and other uh, vista views. Uh, and it also makes an attempt at restricting signs at busy intersections for public safety. So those are the, just to summarize what those changes are. Um, so I'll uh, uh, ask Lewis if you have anything to add or? I just think very briefly, most of the regulations do affect within the right of way, but there is some language that needed to be adjusted regarding private property as well because our current sign ordinance already regulates temporary signs by content on private property. It gives a certain number you're allowed to have, a certain total number of square feet and that is also varies across zone. And so now we simply have two designations of temporary sign in the right of way 
and outside of the right of way, mm -hmm. and have adjusted. Most often, they have adjusted the the square footage allowance to the what was greatest in the zones. So yes, yeah, so, so that people will understand, <coughs> we where uh, we had to make all the signs be treated equally. Right. Uh, we erred on the size on the side of a larger square footage most often most often so as to uh, not cause those types of signs that had historically been placed in the pr on private property to be prejudiced by these changes right so the, there is some marginal benefit to certain types of signs that had been restricted to a smaller smaller size right. but they're now being given a larger size. Right, and being very careful of things like real estate signs, so in which are on private property, not on the right of way usually. So, um, but really wanting to take a, a really holistic look. Whether you are a builder that puts up a sign advertising your building firm, or a real estate agent with a with a house for sale sign, that w on private property we think everyone's needs have been accommodated, and have been working closely with planning staff to make and zoning staff to make sure that those are they think they'll work too. The other, the, uh, and Can you shut that door? Can I ask a quick question? Sure, if you. Um, I'm sorry. I probably didn't, was like thinking of something else, but um, I thought you just said there were restrictions on private property. We currently, in the sign ordinance as it stands now, we have, al we have always regulated the total number of square feet that you may have in temporary signs. Okay. And but we did it based on the type of temporary sign. So okay. currently in the ordinance, it uh, in the performance standards, it, it lists temporary signs giving notice and temporary signs for sale sign, like um, or temporary farm stand signs. And they all were based on content, which made them all uh, no longer allowable under Reed v. Gilbert. So um, the new proposed language simply says temporary signs on private property okay. and deals with them universally. Okay, all right, thank you. The, uh, the other significant uh, modifications uh, uh, in the interest of trying to control the proliferation of signs uh, was uh, to establish a distance between similarly messaged signs uh, to um, one tenth of a mile, which is roughly 500 feet. So uh, every 500 feet, right of way. you'd be at, pardon. Within the right of way. Within the right of way. Within the right of way. Can I ask a question about that? Um, yes. Like done on each side of the road, or within a uh, circum from the circumference of a 10 diameter on, along the same road, or like if you went right. around a corner, would that be allowed? Right. We have. I don't think we've addressed that. I think that um, we talked about which side of the street would be affected in terms of scenic vista views, and we decided that it was a bit, um, it was not in the spirit to designate only one side of the road for that, so we have said flat out between this point and this point. So I think that you're correct. There should be some clarification of that in the language that we can address. Um, so I think that's an easy fix with just a couple of words. Mm -hmm. And as far as an in, so as far as I'm on Gorham Road and I turn right onto this other road, I I don't know. How, what's your pleasure? I think it would be really challenging if we talked about a, a, a radius of a tenth of a mile. And, right. As opposed to as opposed to linear, linear on the same street. Right. Yeah. Right. And I'm. So, it just seems so confusing to me. Yeah, I think a linear I mean, standard. I mean, uh, some makes people more that sense. are like some people that like I would when I first ran for office, I, I knew nothing about politics. I knew nothing about signs. I knew nothing about anything. I came in. I got my paperwork. I left. I wasn't given anything that explained anything about signs or anything mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. I would have had no clue if I was breaking any. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I think we have to be very careful that we don't want to get this to get too complicated and too confusing for the for the normal job. I mean, I'm yeah, not trying I, to. I don't, I'm not saying but dumb I think it that's down. Right, that we should but have clarity. Yeah, it's so got to be really like uh, uh, so that uh, it can be explained 
yeah. by Cody or Tracy right. uh, as people come in and say, so what can I do? Right. Uh, and they're the they're the front guard. They're the face of the town as right. you come through the doors of town hall. Right. So that, that uh, and, uh, are we losing our um, our window surrounding election time? Like there was. There, so currently we have a a rule about you you can't do it within. Do, do you know offhand, Katie? Is it three weeks? Or Tracy, do you know? Oh, you we have a twenty. Prior to the, prior the, to the, the town uh, for all local elections. Right. Like at midnight. At it's twenty days. Twenty days, unless it's a statewide yeah. election, in which case you get sixty, right. days. Yeah. 60 days. Okay. Yeah. Um, so then, is that because that would be content, content based? Right. So that must be going away. I'm assuming. We've dealt with that through. Um, so yeah, you're completely right. With that, that language has to go. Um, so. The, the, there's actually a standalone political sign ordinance that we have that needs to be struck, okay? Um, because we can't have that any longer. That also dictates how close um, political signs can be to the polling place. So we mm, need to. Right. Um, there's state language I think that we can deal with. Like that, we can just kind of reference. I think it's 21A. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, so as far as the the timing, I think, though, what did we say? We said a total of 12 weeks in a calendar year, not to exceed six consecutive weeks. I think three, if I'm reading this correctly. Temporary signs in the right of way are permitted yep. for a period of time not to exceed 12 weeks, with no sign remaining for more than three consecutive weeks. Right. And so with not less than six weeks between so the end of one sign display time period and the beginning of the next, another. We're repealing the political sign ordinance, Chapter 308, and replacing it with a provision, that, and that that provided for a 20-day limit. We're replacing it with uh, 12 weeks throughout the year uh, because it has to be broader than just political. We're not dealing with just political. Uh, mm -hmm. But only three consecutive weeks at a time, which is consistent with our present political sign ordinance. That's in the right of way only, cause thinking about um, things like real estate signs needing, you know, six month contracts, so that does not apply to private property. And I guess I had thought that we had said six weeks um, because that's why we had put it at 12. Because if it was going to be, well, I, we, I don't know if we could think of a time that you would have four times that you'd put a sign up. You know what I mean? Hmm. Um, but if you've got the draft in front of you that, yeah, that, I've got the draft. I was reading from the well, email. It's a long time to look at that. I would agree that six weeks is a long Way time. Too long. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think. I mean, I think. No, no, no. I agree with you. I totally agree with what, like, the concept of what you're saying. But, but I, I, I mean, always have a bug up me it about it. If it's a temporary yeah. sign, after three weeks, you're done. It's not temporary any longer. Perhaps. Right. It's not, it, it, <laughs> right? It is. Isn't it right? Yeah. Right. And that's really what we're trying to do. Okay. Uh, is in the right of way. Uh, restrict it to, you can have 12 weeks over the course of the year, which would solve some of the problems where people have primaries uh, oh, yeah. uh, uh, versus general elections, uh, or periodically have to have them throughout. Uh, but uh, And realtors have the ability to place it on the property itself because they have the permission of the owner. So they're really freed from this restriction. But yeah. if they want to run an open house, they can do it. And they can put it out pretty darn frequently. Jeez, they had 12 weeks. Right. Mr. Babine would already have his signs out there. Yeah, yeah I was telling us in a week. Mr. Babine would already right. have signs out front. That's right. right. We had 12 weeks. Right. Um, We'd see signs everywhere already. So, uh, I think probably uh, uh, we're in agreement on the, the, the uh, distance between signs should have language that explains that it is uh, being judged on a linear basis uh, based on the roadway, on the, the particular roadway. Oh, not the lane. You want it to just be? On, on the road, yeah, on the road. So if you turn, you're okay. It's not, it's not a, a circle, it's a line. So, so if you turn onto another street. Are they also one, ten so but like, let's say that I'm heading northbound and I'm putting them every tenth of a mile. Can I then turn southbound and put them every tenth of a mile? Facing the other way? Well, that's the, that's the, that's the adjunctive question because you not only have the intersection problem, uh, 
uh, but you also have the both sides of the street problem. So I think about Route 1. Uh, Route 1 is 50 feet wide, give or take. Yeah. Um, it seems like if I had to uh, put one sign and then have to then go to the other side of the street, go, to, go a tenth of a mile, put it on the other side, mm -hmm. it seems like that's pretty sparse. A tenth of a mile is already pretty far. It's five, yeah, 500 feet. Yeah. Good. Uh, I hate signs. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't I mean, shied away from I mean, that. You've, you've, you've <laughs> aptly described uh, the way in which a person would, uh, if the uh, ordinance applies to a street and it includes both sides of the street, then that means that they would have f uh, to go 500 feet to put a sign on the other side of the street. Right. Right. I'm Which, fine with that. Uh, yeah, I am too. I mean, I, I, I mean, I think that they're a huge I eyesore. Like yeah. I think they they make our town look ugly. Yeah. I, I I totally. You get 40 of them in groupings, and it's like you can't even read any of them because they all sort of get mixed up together, and I, it just makes our town look tacky. Okay. Good. Then uh, what we'll do is so either side of the street, tenth of a mile, right on the same street. Yep. So it's every tenth of a mile street inclusive of both sides. Correct. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, we have described uh, what it is that we're going to amend to the to the current draft. Uh, I think Larissa and I can just do language that we work up, uh, but I think we can vote on it for passage on to the town council since I'm they'll have a first and a second reading there, so there'll be plenty of time. Yeah, so, uh, I'm fine with that. Fine with that. Yeah. I'm going to I just had one clarifying question. Obviously, this is all temporary signs, including statewide national campaigns. When they come in, they're subject to. Um, and then we discussed um, enforcement last time, I think, briefly. And we, I'm not sure we had resolution around mm. the expectation of how, well, how it gets enforced. We require a, a name and phone number to be on the signs. Yes. So that whenever there's a non-compliance condition mm -hmm. uh, and a person goes, you know, the uh, greater church of <laughs> whatever uh, is got their signs too close to each other, you can look at the phone number, call Toady, Tracy, and then I think Toady has historically just called that phone number and said, you've got a, you've got a problem. Uh, and here's what the ordinance says. And that seems to be the way in which they're 99% of the time solved. Yeah, people, most of the time people, people don't, don't know. Yeah, people, yeah. one, don't know. They go, oops. Yeah, and they move them. Uh, I've had people put signs out for me Yeah. who made mistakes. Yeah. And Tody called me, and I then just went down and pulled that sign and put it 50 feet away, whatever it was the violation was. So. And, and this includes, the, I'm sorry, Will. No, no be you hand. go. I was going to say again, I'm, I'm thinking of statewide and national campaigns that may not be used to putting phone numbers on their signs, then the penalty would be just they, who would remove it. I do believe that that's a requirement now in... It may not be one for much longer. There's actually um, three or four bills in front of the legislature at the moment that are all trying to kind of address temporary signs. None of them are looking for greater restrictions. They are all looking for freeing of restrictions because, of course, the bills are put forward by those that use signs. So um, the, one of the complaints is the name, number, and date requirement. So I will get back to you when, um, last week when I checked on them, they were still heading to committee. They hadn't come out yet. So I can report back. So that language may be changing. Of course, that does not mean that the town cannot have its own language and its own requirements. Um, so as far as people that are connected to and we're going to be careful to not be targeting any specific type of content. So people that are connected to a nation, nationwide or statewide effort that requires temporary signage, um, we are just simply, you are expected to understand the ordinances within the community that you are trying to work. And so I think that I, what I'm hearing we'll ask is, let's say that there's no number, there's no name, who has the ability and um, permission to pull that sign? I've, we, we I've seen police officers pull signs. Uh, I, I think probably 
the way that uh, is Cody right would ask uh, code enforcement since it's a zoning yeah. code. Sure. Uh, it's an ordinance violation. And I mean, the sign uh, says who they are. So I mean, it's very easy for Tody to so, look uh, Google. If they, <laughs> if they <laughs> fail to identify United their name, I think the code enforcement or whatever. would take the signs and just leave them stored uh, somewhere in uh, town hall. And uh, finally, at some point, the people who had put the signs up would undoubtedly say, "Where'd my signs go?" and call the police department, and the police department would say, call the town clerk's office, because right. they're responsible for that, or code enforcement. Now, I'm not sure does, that we need to modify anything. Does this include... No, um, I don't think we do. I was just, yeah. uh, inevitably, that question is going to be asked at full council. Okay. And it will. Yeah. So do you not want, to, you do not want a part of the ordinance that's titled enforcement? Pardon? Do you, so am I hearing that you do not wish or you do wish to have a section within the ordinance titled enforcement? Is there none there now? Well, I don't believe so. We, it's housed in performance. Can we ask Tracy a quick question? Do you, it, or do you mind being put on the spot? Um, do you get phone calls, I mean you must get phone calls about people reporting signs in the wrong, yeah. And then what, your process from there would be try to get hold of whoever it is on the sign and tell them they need to move it. Correct line. the condition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if I mean, have you ever had anyone be non-compliant? Um, not to my knowledge. Okay. I mean, there are people who you know may not go out and do what they need to do, but then you start getting into other areas. But most of them are pretty good in going out and doing, doing what they it. need to do. Okay. Because I think that makes a big difference in. So when we back way back when when we had a, a political sign <laughs> ordinance uh, that says that you have to remove them within three days of an election, I've definitely seen non-compliance. Oh, me too. Assume, yeah. So, I don't know what my point was there, but. Well, I'm, and and, and <laughs> Larissa picking up on your your comments was saying, should we have anything that constitutes an enforcement provision? within our sign ordinance. Right now we don't. Uh, and uh, it would be a simple provision that would say co code enforcement is uh, authorized uh, to enforce the sign ordinance. But I'm surprised that they, that isn't already in there. You know, it's possible that it's, we, so right now, from, and I may be incorrect, but I believe it's housed within our performance standards, so it's not like it's in a separate, it's not like it's like the Good Neighbor Ordinance that was just passed, right? right. That was a separate ordinance standalone. So it's language that is folded into this much larger performance standards. So there may be language within that overall performance standards mm -hmm. that is clearly states about code enforcement being, so my, I'll check into that. Well, would you, uh, because my guess is their uh, code enforcement uh, very much regulates uh, uh, illegal signs, so, so signs that violate the zoning ordinance. In fact, I've heard the code enforcement officer, uh, Brian, talk about how it can occupy a lot of time running around to uh, get people to comply with all the myriad of sign regulations that we have. So uh, I know they do it. We'll allow Larissa to uh, be our representative with uh, code enforcement. See if we can get that, you can email us back, advise us on that. But I don't think there's probably a need because I think there's already something there. Great. Good. Uh, I just have one other question. Go. I'm so sorry. Um, I, in, in this, does it cover, because um, it did originally, like the marsh area, the off-limit areas? Mm -hmm. It does, yeah. Yeah, it okay. sure does. And I, yeah. I really like how that was done with, when you specify the, along the road between this road, this intersection, in this intersection. Thank so, you. Um, the other, there was an open question there about land trust views and broad term farm, and I didn't know if you wanted to address yes. that. Yes, uh, and uh, as it, it was uh, published, uh, posted, uh, it limited it, the land trust lands to uh, Pleasant Hill Preserve. 
And I think the reasoning was that the problem really doesn't exist in uh, Western mm -hmm. Scarborough, Broad Turn Farm, uh, which was Fuller Farm. Fuller Farm. Yeah. So those were the uh, Kathy from Scarborough Land Trust identified the properties. We looked at each one. They were uh, in very rural settings, uh, all of them, uh, except for uh, either that or they were woodsy, marshy, kind of, that really didn't represent uh, out there on Payne Road. There's uh, a woodsy, marshy area. Oh, okay. Two woods, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, so we, uh, I spoke with uh, the director of the Scarborough Land Trust and told her that we were, for, for reasons that we did not want to engage in overreach on this. Mm -hmm. uh, we can always add things uh, if, we, if we identify others. But right now, we have clear marsh, uh, Scarborough Marsh is the orientation, and it's primarily uh, along Route one. Route 1 and Black Point Road. Yep. So we've got that. Uh, any other questions? No, I have one. Do I have permission then to also have this do a final run through with Phil Sossier? Do a what? Final run through, read through by Phil Sossier? Tom Turney. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, that would be great. Uh, the other thing I just want to say out loud because I'm not sure we covered it, but, but we're, the other thing we're doing is we're talking about um, to protect public safety in and around intersections with mm -hmm. high traffic volumes, no temporary signs shall be placed in the right of way within 50 feet of the following intersections and then lists a number of yeah, busy I intersections. Love that. Right. And that's terrific. Yeah, it's all Route, route 1, Payne Road, Gorham yep. Road. and Gorham, Gorham Road. Yeah. So uh, those all looked appropriate and. Uh, that makes me happy. Good. Me. Any other uh, discussion? Public? Uh, comments from the public? Good. Uh, uh, I'll entertain a motion. Oh, so moved. Second. Okay, we're voting on uh, a motion to uh, advance the sign ordinance as submitted in the package of materials posted with the agenda with uh, edits uh, uh, to uh, the provisions that we discussed. Yep. Uh, uh, any further discussion? Mm -mm. All in favor? Unanimous. Good. That was well done. Uh, that, that, was, that was a tricky one, and, and I must say, Larissa did a good job with that, really. Thank you. Very good. Uh, uh, discussion on horse beach permits. Uh, and uh, <coughs> uh, we have received some uh, information uh, from. Uh, uh, the public, and I'll open it up to the public for for a comment, so that we have the benefit of any thoughts that you, that the one member of the public <laughs> may have. Well, I'm surprised that there aren't. I'm Susan Hamill, uh, Bay Street. I'm surprised that there aren't people here from the horse community, but um, you've heard from me before on this, and um, uh, it's just an ongoing problem. Uh, I, I do know that Old Orchard, before they joined with Scarborough um, mm -hmm. in, to offer the joint horse permit, required the bun bag, um, mm -hmm. that the riders use bun bags. But Old Orchard didn't sell that many horse permits at that point, and I believe the reason was that it was about $10 and it was only good for maybe three days, where in, you could get one in Scarborough, it was cheaper, and it was good for the whole season. So um, I... I had offered up um, a couple of ideas on strengthening, you know, what are some options that we have, and um, because I do, I mean, what a, it's a great place to, to bring your horse to the beach. I mean, I can't, especially in the winter when, you know, where else can they go? But um, because it's so flagrantly, um, you know, just totally disregarded, no one really intends to clean up after their horse that we've got to do something. And um, so whether it's more enforcement or uh, changing the ordinance so that the, it reads to immediately pick up the horse waste, um, I don't think that would have the effect that we need. Um, possibly 
have more enforcement. I mean, we do have a, I believe he's a full-time animal control officer. And um, if you know it's a weekend and there's a midday low tide, change his hours so that he is down there at the beach. Um, that's another option. Uh, I don't, you know, I really recommend that, I, I think the best thing to do is to require the bun bag, and that's, so, I have, if you have any questions. Thank I, you, Susan. Yeah. Uh, we may, and, and make yourself comfortable while we, uh, Tracy, were you able to speak with the Old Orchard Beach? I sent him an email, and she said that she would talk to the town manager about having the bun bags put back into the ordinance. She has not responded to my previous email about asking if she has, but she said she didn't really see a problem with it. Okay. So, the, uh, I think I had asked uh, Tracy to check with them because we would like to achieve conformance uh, okay. uh, because uh, it's a continuous beach mm -hmm. uh, from Old Orchard to Pine Point. They did used to have it. Yeah, they did. And told me, told me kind of went together and then they had to remove it because mm -hmm. the, the, the other piece of information, Tracy, fill us in on the number of permits this past year this for each. I thought that was interesting. I think that there was maybe 20 or 30 or so from Old Orchard Beach, probably that's too high, and there was maybe, we'll say 75 from us. It was kind of not overly high this year. And, and I think uh, what's happened is um, the, some of the sulky horses at uh, the racetrack are no longer housed there uh, just because of uh, a lessening demand for uh, trotters. Uh, so we have less there. Scarborough was, by the numbers that, and Tracy and Tony and I talked about this, a week or two ago, it was like, as I remember, 50 in the teens for permits from Old Orchard Beach mm. versus 75 for uh, or thereabouts for us. So we're dealing with a circumstance where Scarborough really probably ought to drive the train. I mean, m most of the permits are coming from us, from property owners who have their horses situated in Scarborough. So. Uh, uh, Susan Hamill's suggestion of a bun bag does seem to be a way. Yeah. It's sort of cut and dry. I think it's a good next step, personally. Oh, that's what I was just going to yeah. say. Right. I think it's where we start. Right. Yeah, I don't want to start with banning. No, and if we have, I mean. Over, if we have to, we have to. Yeah. But I don't think we're there yet. And I think it's a real problem for uh, riders to clean up. Uh, and this isn't to make an excuse for them because no, rules are rules. They have to be able to do it. But yet horses are big animals mm -hmm. and some people are not big people. And getting on and off a horse uh, a mile away from your, your vehicle, which had a little uh, stand for you to step up and get on a horse, I think is a problem for some people. So. I don't put them in an impossible situation of not complying with the law. Give them a law that they can comply with. And I'll say um, two, two things from experience. One, um, I was a rider for many years um, and the most amazing experience to ride on a beach. Um, and I would hate to take that away from people. But I will say when you're in the middle of a canter and you're <laughs> taken off and you're horse needs to go, they don't slow down to go. I mean, they're, 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 they kind of keep going. Yeah. And it's, it is difficult to stop, get off, clean it up, and especially with you're with a bunch of other riders, yeah. you know, they're, they're gone and you're back there trying to figure out how you're going to, if you're ill-prepared and yeah. you're, it's your first time doing it or whatever, you know, there are people that I could see that would just leave it. And, you know, just like when we went through the dog issue, we have a responsibility to the taxpayers of Scarborough to keep our beaches clean. Mm -hmm. And so I think this is, you know, a f the first conservative step that we can make. And if this doesn't work, then we're going to have to to be more forceful mm -hmm. because we owe it to the people that use the beaches 
to not have that happen. Yeah. Um, my the second point, I was a police officer in Old Orchard for a couple of years, and we didn't have riders on the Old Orchard side as much for a couple of different reasons. One, the beaches aren't the beach access there is not as accessible as it is on the Scarborough side, and the beach is not um, as as flat and as clean as per se, you know, like the Pine Point area. Um, it's almost like two different beaches. It's really strange. But um, so we rarely ran into having horse issues at all down there. Mm -hmm. So I can see why um, Scarborough has far more um, permit requests. Yeah. And I do agree that we should be the ones driving the bus on this. Uh, I think probably what we should do is uh, draft that the recommendation is uh, to bring this back for final approval of language mm -hmm. uh, at the uh, June meeting, and I think Larissa and I will work on that. Uh, uh, but no, too. Oh, um, I was going to say, I, I also like the suggestion regarding uh, increasing the penalty. Mm -hmm. um, change the penalty to ban the rider on the second offense. Um, I think maybe exploring what we could do there, maybe some banning on a certain number of uh, offense and or changing the dollar amount. Yeah. Uh, certainly enforcement's a problem, and I, I think that if we were to change the access at certain days and times, at least initially, it might be hard to get that message out. We have a lot of signs there already. Yeah, so it, it, it's interesting, the, the uh, banning either for the year or for longer, but there was an article in the Press Herald about uh, uh, shellfish, uh, and there was a lot of lobster violations mm. that were going on. And the, the recommendation in the legislature was that if you have a second or third violation, that you're, you're banned for a certain period of time uh, for several years, which is uh, in, in this other shellfish area had been quite successful. Mm -hmm. Because people took it much more seriously, mm -hmm. so that was the re so I I do think that uh, after and I don't know where the right moment is whether it's uh, a second offense uh, would ban you for a year. Oh, I would say second offense. I think I I don't I think once you're told that it's the wrong thing to do, it's like children. I mean, <laughs> these are adults. Most of these are adults. Like, yeah. it's, if it's wrong, it's wrong. Stop okay. doing it. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I have no tolerance for that. And, and those are our beaches. It's true. It's the, one, it's the one bite rule for dogs. Yeah. You know, right? One, one why, bite, second bite. My, my fault, second bite, your fault. Right. Yeah. Like, why would we give them three or four chances? I mean, if you have to think, if they're going to do it once and be told, if they do it a second time, that means they've completely disregarded that first, and yeah. they don't care. They're going to continue yeah. to do it three, four, five times. So would you say that they uh, lose their, um, it's a license? It's a permit. It's permit. a permit. They lose their permit rights for? Uh, I would say the first offense is a year. year. and second For the rest of the year. Yeah, and second offense, I would say three years. Yeah, it's a, yeah. if you were to, to get a permit in a second, yeah, the following year. You're or lose it a second time. Yeah. Yeah. Lose it a second time. Yeah, it would be. Sure. Okay, that uh, that sounds like uh, bun bags. I believe is a trade name. It is a trade name. Also, um, as Councillor Donovan and I discussed, if we were to require a bun bag, we would be the only ordinance that I can find in the United States. So most of the ordinance language requires either or, either cleaning up your waste or use of a bun bag. Um, so I would just like some guides about what you would like that drafted language to look like. You're going to work on that with her, right? Well, I, I, I think we're not looking at an either-or situation. No, I don't. It's mandatory. No, it's mandatory. A bun bag is mandatory. Yeah, yeah and we'll, we'll, we'll deal with the trademark issue to be able to use language. Well, as we talked, they're called fecal capture bags. Yeah. Um, and uh, I... <laughs> I was hoping you'd be the first to say that. Glad to do so. Um, I... <laughs> I don't know if it is my place or not, and please tell me if it's not, but um, 
I, I agree. I think it's odd that there's no one from the horse community here. So if you will allow me to speak for those that I spoke to regarding this, wanting to know, like, why don't they use them? Horses apparently need to be trained to use these bags. It is not something you can just strap on your horse and have them go. So I, I just would caution that um, I'm, I think it's lovely to blaze trail if we wish to be the first community to have a requirement for one of these bags, um, by all means. Sometimes it's great to be number one. Um, but I would just caution that there may be some pushback from the horse community regarding horses that simply are not trained or to use but, these bags. So let's, let's do some investigating on that. Uh, Tracy, can you find out from the Old Orchard Beach uh, uh, town clerk's office how long they had in place the requirement of a, of a bun bag uh, and whether they had ever heard of any issues of uh, horse owners complaining that it required some special training of the horse to acclimate them Can to we it? actually see their old ordinance? Would they still have a copy of the ordinance that we could look at? Way back machine. So maybe if you I could ask them for a copy of your old ordinance, too, that would help. I probably have it in my old bag. If you have <laughs> it, then... I might have it. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'd, I'd like to explore, really explore the, 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 the in, insisting that they, that the requirements that they do it. I think we can really justify clearly, you know, there's non-compliance. We already have the, the ordinance that says that they have to clean up and it's not happening. Um, yeah. And we have a, you know, there's a... Uh, the bacterial pollution contamination. That's an active fishery yeah. down there. I mean, if, if we get like, people's livelihoods I know. on the right on that side, so I, I, I don't. Can, I, I, think I, could, I think we can make the argument that it needs to be done. I can tell you right now. I I I'm not gonna. I won't support anything um, except for a bun bag. Good. I just yeah. I've I've looked into it. I we've been talking about this for months. Um, I just feel like. We we held other animals and other people to certain standards, and I think we have to, you know what I mean, yeah. with our beaches. And I think we have to continue to protect them as best we can. And and I think I feel I'm sorry if if that is legitimate that you know certain horses that they won't go in that bag, if that limits them from using the beach. I feel I do have sympathy for that, but then maybe they shouldn't be on the beach in the first place. Well, it probably obligates them to go through the training process. If there is a training process, okay. Uh, go to a different beach. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, good, so okay, so we'll, uh, we'll work on, on that. Marissa and I will work on that. We'll get some uh, help from Tracy on information from Old Orchard Beach. And, uh, and we'll bring that back next month. Uh, motion to that effect. I'll, I'll make that motion, sure. A second. Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> senior property tax relief. We all know we've had a program for a year, uh, and <clears throat> the uh, fundamental elements of the program are if you're a Scarborough resident, uh, age 62 or older, lived in Scarborough for 10 years, uh, and you have uh, income t uh, adjusted gross income tax on your federal tax return of $50,000 or less, you're eligible for the Senior Property Tax Relief Program. Uh, and so if your uh, property taxes exceed 5% uh, of your adjusted gross income, uh, you can receive up to $500. That's the program in a nutshell. Uh, and Will, why don't you give sure. us a little update? Uh, yeah, so uh, as you alluded to earlier, um, I had the historic preservation meeting. After the meeting, uh, uh, Ms. Holbrook um, uh, asked to speak me, to me for a minute and um, uh, said that she would re was really interested in, in trying to uh, increase the maximum amount from $500 to $600. Um, to offset the fact that last year we gave $500, this year we're looking at a tax increase on the mm -hmm. average house, which is going to be at least $100, mm -hmm. um, and this would then ensure that the individuals that, that were receiving that that would fall under um, would then be mostly made whole uh, in terms of the, the tax increase um, and um, 
Um, she was quite, quite strident. Um, <laughs> I had also seen an email thread uh, initiated by uh, Councilor Foley um, uh, to that effect, um, and uh, to which the response was that you know we were looking for more data uh, for another year, and we're looking to maybe potentially expand the eligibility so that um, and or um, index the the um, uh, index the benefits so that as costs go up, the, this this would uh, benefit would increase as well. Um, and uh, uh, as I was explaining that to uh, to Jessica, um, Craig um, Frederick was there, and he said, "Well, you know, it, it really wouldn't." Uh, preclude us from making a change next year when we have more data. Uh, it would really help the, the population of the people that, that benefit from it, and it would be a really simple change to the existing ordinance to just change the uh, the maximum benefit from 500 to 600. And I said, well, I'll, I'll uh, take Bill and see what he thinks. Uh, and so last night after the meeting, captured, I cornered Bill um, and uh, made that case and, and said again that it wouldn't mean that we couldn't make changes in the fall. Um, and then uh, Tom walked by and we, we talked to him about it and he said, well, there might be um, a reserve there that we could tap into that we might not have to make um, offsets in the existing budget or go increase the, uh, the, the levy on the taxpayer. Um, and, um, and so that's kind of where we left it. And so which Bill kindly said, sure. well, let's put it on the agenda for t today. And we'll talk about Can I ask you some questions? Yeah, and let me just add a, a little bit of um, the Perfect. background Thank you. So, th so that you'll uh, uh, appreciate where we are. Uh, this first year, the, we had, I think, 280 uh, successful applicants, uh, totaling about $137,000. We budgeted $70,000. Uh, I was going to say the uh, budget for that was a lot but we, more. But we had um, a substantial sum in a reserve account, and that money had been uh, budgeted year in and year out while the program existed, but never got used. And so um, Councillor Ed Blaze had said, let's adopt a policy of a reserve account. Right. And that money was set aside year in and year out and accrued uh, until it represented a fairly sizable amount of money, um, you know, six figures. So uh, this past year, we knew we were going to go beyond 70,000. We did. We went to 137. So we essentially used $67,000 of the reserve. When Will and I spoke with the, the town manager uh, after the town council meeting last night, he clarified that he had looked up to find out how much was left. $64,000 is still left in the reserve account. So that if you fall, if you exceed the budget amount, and we are presently budgeting 130000 which is going back to the historical number yep. that we had always budgeted yep. for this program. With, because there was a time when the program had 300 yep. recipients. Yep. Uh, because at that point, the state program was a reasonable program to uh, to be able to successfully apply to. And if you got the state uh, program successfully uh, uh, given to you, which was anywhere from $500 to $1,000, uh, you would also get the towns. So uh, that's how we came to sort of establish a $130,000 budget, because that's generally where we were. So now, uh, going into uh, next year, uh, if we have 130,000 uh, and we increase the benefit by $100, as an example, and we had 300 beneficiaries, that'd be $30,000, and uh, we could reasonably expect we would exceed the budgeted amount by $30,000 or $40,000. Well, we have 64,000. So it will not actually have any impact on the taxes. Now the program, uh, more people could wake up and say, gee, I qualify. Uh, and so there is always the chance that we'll, but those numbers you would think would be only in the 10 or 20% more. Right. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't blow, in other words, it wouldn't completely bust the budget. One of the things we've never wanted to do is run out of money so that we have to apportion instead of getting 500 
the ordinance calls for an apportionment. Mm -hmm. So you might get 450 if there's too many people from the amount that's budgeted. But in this case, I think 64,000 as a reserve account probably exceeds anything that we would expect. So uh, that's sort of the background now. Council St. Clair, you had questions? So, re so running some of the numbers. So not everybody who applied got the full $500, right? Isn't it? Isn't uh, there like there levels? Is, right. Uh, but of the 279 uh, people, I believe everyone qualified for the 500. More or less, everyone qualified for the 500. Yeah, it was really And only close. one or two people uh, uh, were turned down because they're in, e either their years of tenure in mm -hmm. the town was hadn't quite reached 10 uh, through one circumstance or another, uh, or their income exceeded $50,000. Okay. So, if we were to take that 130,000 that we have budgeted plus that 64,000 that's left in the reserve, we'd come out with 194,000. And even if we had 300 successful candidates, that would only put us at 180,000. So we'd still have a little bit of wiggle room there. Mm -hmm. So I, I would support this. Yeah, I think the numbers sound. Good. I, I guess I'm, I'm somewhat concerned about you know burning the reserves, but I think that that's not an issue for this year. That's and and I mean that's the thing that, that what what you might say is we would like to have the program be sustainable, that people will accept the fact that, and so a hundred dollars may not be the magic number, mm -hmm. uh, because we we may do if we said we would do fifty dollars this year. We may find ourselves uh, next year looking at a, an annual COLA mm -hmm. where we say, well, every year the, the taxes are going to go up, X, then we're going to increase people's ability to afford to pay those taxes. Mm -hmm. And that increase might be an extra you know, $50 a year. Now, so we are we are looking at more or less burning, and so we would have to next year. Next year will be a hard budget. Yep. Yep. Uh, there is just no getting around that uh, we have used reserves extensively to fill the gap of uh, not having this budget be a uh, real disaster in terms of the impact on the taxpayer. I think I'm in the mind frame of, of passing at at a hundred dollars and sending it to the full council for debate yeah I, I think I'd share that view that I, way I we pull in the finance guys and well I wonder if, if it wouldn't be a courtesy to let the finance committee know that we're doing this prior to their six o'clock meeting tonight mm -hmm. if, we, if we were to pass it what do you I mean how do you feel about that well I'm just uh, I'm just worried that we uh, in, because these are very deserving people so, so, uh, uh, and the one question that I had uh, was, how long has it been $500? Uh, because the ordinance has been in existence for quite some time, and I don't think it was the dollar Jeff, amount. Jeff had that history there. She was saying 10 years. Yeah, I was so, going to say before so me. What, which is to argue that after 10 years, it's still $500. Mm -hmm. So it, you know, uh, and historically, it's always been about uh, 300 people, 300 households mm -hmm. who benefit from this. So we've always been in that 300 times uh, 500. 500, you know, 137. 100, 100, 137,000. 150,000 has been what's been needed, and I think the only reason that we have the amount that we have now is because the state has kind of bailed on the thing, mm -hmm. which is another good reason for upping it. Right, absolutely. So I, I, I think uh, if we, I mean, I feel pretty strong that we should try and do, that we should do this. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, 
I'll accept the motion. So moved. Second. Uh, discussion. I'm comfortable sending it at $100 and sending it to the council for a full, full okay. discussion. So uh, uh, I think probably this is a new item on the agenda. It was not posted so that from a policy uh, a notice point of view, I think we need to, uh, one, inform the uh, finance committee that we would like to be able to advance this, that we are uh, planning on having language presented to us in the June uh, uh, ordinance committee meeting for uh, passing along to the town council. Mm -hmm. could, could, and could we, in, in light of that, this, since it is just a cross out the five, right in a six to the existing ordinance, could we advance it tonight to the, so, so that it could be heard at the next meeting? Mm -hmm. And the reason is that because we're talking about the budget, there's going to be the vote in June, the six two readings, um, and I'd like to have it that way we'd have first re we could have our first reading um, yeah. at, our, uh, at our next council meeting and then the second reading in early June. Yeah, the so point of, of, of first and second reading and a public hearing certainly uh, uh, alleviates the problem of the public not receiving right. notice of this discussion today so that they'll still have uh, an adequate opportunity to uh, advance their own view. I think it would be a different story if this was, if it, that's how it was coming down at the council level, but I, I'm comfortable. It's not the first time we've had to do something like this to get something through an ordinance. So, I'm, and it's a, I, I believe it's a, it's a positive thing for the community, so I can't imagine people being up in arms about it. Right, and well, we get the money. I yeah, mean, we do it, have the it's money. It's not like it. we're uh, going to have to expand the budget to be able to accommodate this. Right, and these are some, like you said, some very deserving people. Yeah, so I think there, there's some, it's a real pluses and minuses and balancing, but on, on, on balance, I would say, let's advance it to the town council uh, at the uh, uh, second meeting in May. Yeah. Come on, vote. Good. All in favor? <laughs> oh. <laughs> what was it, a fecal what? Fecal oh, capture bag? Fecal okay. capture bag. You have pictures? Well, there are pictures. And Hannah, how to do a dog put it on? Super. But honestly, it's kind of like trying to put a sweater on a dog. Some dogs will be fine, and some dogs will hate it. Um, same with horses. Some can learn in one training session, yeah. and others will. But it's, they have to learn how to use it. It's just a matter of being comfortable yeah, I think it must be uh, much the way a, ho uh, 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 a horse needs to adjust to new shoes. Uh, having a saddle yeah. put on. So, then did you make them also for dogs? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Good. That's good. Uh, All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, that takes us to no, uh, agenda. I know. Um, uh, Agenda for next time. Let's see. What, yes, sir. What have we? What have we got coming back? You. Oh, can question on the horse speech department. Yep. And the senior assistance program and the sign language, uh, the sign ordinance language, um, to have a final draft of that, or is that going directly to council, trusting the draft? Is it not coming back? Yeah, that's going to council. Okay. We're just going to put put that language together and. Yeah, that's. Yeah, it's going to council. Yeah, it was pretty minor. In your property tax relief on there? So we got the... That's going to council. Right. So it's just the fund bank. Okay. All right, then we'll... Uh, um, we have a list that mm -hmm. we worked off of in the January meeting. Yep. Uh, people can look at that and, and make suggestions. Yes. I'll uh, confer with Tom and get his advice. I feel uh, like I had something to ask you about, Bill. Like a like a something to put on the agenda, but I can't think of it right now. So I'll. But if I can find Let out, then to you immediately. Good. Very good. Then uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor.
Good. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Got a lot done. Got a lot done. Yep. Yeah. Wow.